Hi all, in this video we will take a look at the GMAT CON section and 6 tips to ace it. Let us now take an overview of what the GMAT CON section is all about. The quantitative reasoning section in GMAT tests the candidates on their mathematical ability. This section does not test you on extremely advanced mathematical concepts, rather tests you on basic concepts of algebra, geometry and arithmetic. The quantitative reasoning section contains 31 questions. There are two types of questions, data sufficiency and problem solving. Number of questions from each type can vary for different test takers. However, total number of questions will always be 31. Total time allotted for this section is 62 minutes. In data sufficiency, a statement style problem is given followed by two statements. Using the data in the statements, you have to decide whether you have enough data in the statements to answer the question asked. Let's take a look at how answer choices will be presented. Select A part if you think statement 1 alone is sufficient but statement 2 alone is not sufficient. Select B part if you think statement 2 alone is sufficient but statement uh, 1 alone is not sufficient. Select C part if you think both statements together are sufficient but neither statement alone is sufficient. Select D part if you think each statement alone is sufficient and select E part if you think statements 1 and 2 together are not sufficient. Remember here you don't have to solve the question rather just have to answer if the information given is enough or not. Problem solving questions on the other hand require you to solve for a definite answer. Here is a typical GMAT problem solving question. These questions are multiple choice questions like you would see on any other multiple choice question test. These questions have five options out of which only one is correct. The quant section in GMAT is computer adapted. First question you receive in this section will be of medium difficulty. As you answer each question, the computer scores your answer and uses it as well as your responses to any preceding question to select the next question. If you answer the first question correctly, the computer will give you a harder question. If you answer the next question incorrectly, your next question will be easier. This process continues until you complete the section. Using responses to all previously answered questions, the computer will have an accurate assessment of your ability in that subject. Now let's take a look at how students perform in quant section. The quant section is scored on a scale of 0 to 60. However, in practice, the score range is 6 to 51. If we look at recent percentiles in quant section, there is a huge variance in percentile in the 46 to 51 score range. A score of 51 will give you a 96th percentile, a score of 50 will give you an 85th percentile, whereas a score of 49 will drop down to 74th percentile. A score of 48 will be 67th percentile and a score of 45 will come down to 55th percentile. Scoring in quant is relatively easier. As we can see, one third of the students score around 48 or more. So anyone aiming for a 700 plus score should try to maximize his or her potential in the quant section. Now let's take a look at key points to ace your GMAT quant. GMAT asks questions based on concepts taught in high school. There will be many topics which you would have not seen since high school. So a thorough revision of the concepts is key. You should aim not to skip any topic and do a linear and systematic preparation. GMAT test creators try to puzzle you with the language of the question. You should slow down while reading the question so that your brain can gather all the information. You should be clear about the task at hand and not get creative during the process. Being an adaptive test, silly mistakes in GMAT will ruin your chances of a high score. You will not only get that particular question wrong, but also reduce the difficulty level of the test. Getting the question right should not be your only goal. You have to find the solution in the most effective manner. On average, you get two minutes to solve a question. Thus, you should learn strategies to solve different types of questions efficiently. Strategies like plugging in numbers, back solving, estimating, etc. can help you a lot in a test like GMAT. Try to use logic more than math in solving questions. 
you will have to do 31 questions in 62 minutes to complete the GMAT quant section. GMAT penalizes you if you fail to finish the section. Thus, time management while attempting the GMAT is very crucial. You should practice solving questions in around 2 minutes. Take timed mock tests which will give you a feel of the actual GMAT exam and help you calm your nerves. You should analyze every question that you practice, even if you get it right. While practicing, you should look at multiple ways in which the question can be solved and then adopt the method which takes the least time. Try to find patterns and mistakes that you make and then try to rectify them. And most importantly, get in touch with our experts to provide the extra edge to your preparation and realize your dream score. Let's recap. Master the basic concepts, take time to read questions carefully, approach the questions strategically, regularly practice under a time constraint, learn from the questions you practice, seek expert guidance. All these things should help you realize your dream score. To know more, log on to careerlauncher.com slash gmat or click on the link in the description. Thanks for watching.